check out the size of these four by eights. These are 20 foot long four by eights. They are so heavy. Thor and I, we've been milling the last couple weekends and he happened to have a log that he could cut these with. His mill, he uses a Lucas mill and it's amazing what this mill can do. These are by far the heaviest logs that, uh, or the heaviest uh, timber that I've ever had to lift. And we're gonna be using that for the foundation for lab three. So hopefully that gets done this week. I have uh, two students gonna be coming uh, tomorrow. I have Bruce and his son. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting this figured out with them. We just said goodbye to Chris Wong. He was our student taking our mentorship this week from Vancouver. And we've been working on greenhouse three. So for this video, I'm going to be going over the new design for the greenhouse and I've been really, really appreciative of all the students that I've had this year so far. Chris was uh, definitely one of uh, the top hard work, hard working students that uh, have taken our, uh, our course so far this year, but, but every student's been great. And this is a, a really exciting project for me. This is something that I talked about two years ago on Curtis Stone's YouTube channel. If you've been following us since then. We talked about wanting to do this, but it didn't make sense with the cash flow of my business. And there's a lot of reasons why we're moving forward to this. I'm going to be getting into all of that in this video. So really excited to share with you guys the progress on this. And I'm really grateful that Chris was able to be here to experience this because we had a lot of fun putting this up. So anyways, guys, we'll, uh, we'll go over all this in just a minute. <laughs> Chris and I spent the whole day working on this a few days ago and this is something that we're just trying to piece together and figure out as 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 it all comes together but I did pre-order the poly uh, as as I mentioned we had talked about this on Curtis Stone's YouTube channel and he recommended CY growers so I contacted CY growers and I got everything custom cut to length the way they do it is uh, they have different different dimensions and then you just got to kind of figure out what works for you so for us uh they had 36 uh and then i cut that by nine for the front and the back door and then for the for the poly that's going to go over top of the whole canopy they have a 24 length and then i just cut that to length uh what we need big big tip is you want to make sure you have extra to work with so that's what we've done and I ordered some extra channel lock and some extra wiggle wire. If you guys don't know what channel lock and wiggle wire is, that's this stuff right here. So this is channel lock, or this is, uh, sorry, this is wiggle wire. 
and this kind of you just go back and forth and it fits into these channels and we can cut this up simply just with an angle grinder so that's all we've been doing we just got a bunch of straps here right now and i have two extra lengths so what my approach to getting this all figured out is i want i wanted to have a door so we framed in this screen mesh here and it's pretty much based off of the current greenhouses we're using but we want more fresh air so we have a bigger window and the back door in these greenhouses we don't actually use and the zippers they always get calcified so it's uh for us we've just gotten used to not using the back door so the new design is just going to have a window just like this and we uh we just kind of started putting in this screen and then we got the plastic figured out and we used the wiggle wire just to kind of catch an edge and then you can stretch it out and start getting it nice nice and tight and you know this could be a little bit tighter if we want but this is still great this is a uv uh, protected six mil white poly uh, again we want to go with the white because it does add some shade this is just a lot better grade than this we're expecting this white poly to last probably about four to seven years Whereas these covers, they start ripping and breaking from the wind and the sun in about one and a half to two years. So, and the nice thing about this is that those screens, over time they wreck. So this screen over time will wreck as well. But because we have the wiggle wire, we can just pop it out and put in a new one. Whereas we're having to sail tape, use sailing tape, which sticks really well for this poly or silicone and, and repair those screens over time. So I'm really excited about having an option for switching this window out, but I also want to be able to have more fresh air. So we're going to be able to lift up the sides. So we're just, we're just working on getting the poly that's going to be over the cover to cinch tight on this channel lock here. And then I have room to raise and lower a flap of poly here. We're probably still going to use like a metal bar that's just like in this greenhouse but we might have a roll-up option or we're just going to lift it up but we're going to have some kind of uh, probably like the same mesh as that window we're going to have like a screen that has an extra flap so we can have like a screen layer that goes all the way down so bugs don't get in and we can lift up the plastic and this is going to allow more fresh air and why that's really important is in the spring or in the fall when it's a little bit wet out when it's a little bit colder our fans don't run as often and the greenhouses they tend to have dirty air They're, the air is over humidified and we start seeing blotch problems we can mitigate that by reducing some of the shade cloth that we have in the greenhouses we have shade cloths on either wall inside we also have a shade cloth over the canopy and we have shade cloth on the shelves but i like having the shade in there because it does produce a better mushroom so we're looking to raise up the sides and that should be a really good option for us moving forward. So another nice feature is we have a door. Again, those zippers in the old design, they like to calcify and just rip or, or just catch and, and they, don't really, they don't really close as well over time. So having a nice door here, this, this will create really good workflow for my guys. It's just really slick. I just, I just have to come up with uh, like a door handle and some kind of lock mechanism. Uh, my business partner, Thor, he was mentioning maybe even like magnets up here where it just kind of closes and catches. So that's something I'm gonna be looking into as well. So this is a project that I'm hoping to get fit, finished by this, uh, this week coming up. And I have uh, two students actually gonna be on the farm this week. I have Bruce and his son. So I'm looking forward to meeting you guys. And we're gonna hope to get this figured out and then I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out, but I really like it. So we're going to probably go ahead and get Greenhouse 7 to the new design as well. And then next year, we're probably not going to invest in switching these greenhouses over just yet because everything in on my farm has a brand new cover. So next year, it's really just uh, trying to reduce the amount of money we're spending and start reducing our debt load that we started with in 2014. We've been building up to this point on my farm, trying to get the farm finally finished. And that is what this year is all about. We're almost done. And something like this, this new greenhouse design, this is just a fun little project that I'm working on. We're even getting three new sterilizers. 
for our farm. So we're gonna have a lot more production this year. And that's why we're moving up to the, the seven greenhouses on my farm. Uh, before I end, you, end, end this video, I just wanna show you what Clay and Simon were working on in lab uh, two and three. We got lots of production there. For everything in our greenhouses right now, I'll bring you there in a minute, they're all starting to fruit. And all of that is our overwinter production. And now we're just starting to get all of our spring production colonized and that'll start going to greenhouses in the next couple weeks. So all of this we started uh, maybe three weeks ago or so. We have different stages, but everything's looking great. Uh, all of this is top, top bagged or dry bagged but uh, not mixed. So we've added the soy hulls on top with the sawdust and then we've just added water. We're gonna be using that with Brad's machine uh, probably about May 1st. So we've been experimenting with the dry bagging technique and it's been working great. So we got, you know, half of this filled up and probably in the next 10 days or so, we're gonna have everything finished. Another nice project I got my guys to work on is the covers for the new workbench that's right here. I like involving them in construction when I can, so they've done a really good job. And all we have to do is lag bolt these on to the flow hood workbench and a nice coat of paint. Everything will be white just to brighten up the space. But, you know, really excited to get this project almost finished. And once we have the new lab that's gonna go down here, we'll be able to really take advantage of this space. All right, well, that's all for now. That's a quick update. I'm gonna leave you guys with some B-roll footage of what's going on in our greenhouses. I'm expected to be harvesting in probably the next four days or so. So we're gonna start filling orders for restaurants next week. And probably by the end of April, we're gonna be producing about, uh, I wanna say 70 to 80 pounds uh, a day. That's kind of what we're looking to do. And then this production is gonna keep going. We're gonna get three more sterilizers on our farm and we're looking to really hit uh, about a thousand pounds of mushrooms a week this year. So that's kind of the goal. So anyways, guys, we'll catch you in the next video.